then we can discuss a bit about cystode. Cystode and trematode. <coughs> cystodes also they are called as tapeworm, they are flat, they are flat worms and the classification of cystode is based on habitat you can classify as intestinal cystode and somatic cystode. Intestinal uh, cystode example is tinea, tinea sagenata as well as tinea solium both can cause intestinal manifestation. Hest nana, diphylobotrium latum, all these can cause intestinal manifestation. Somatic or tissue cystode, echinococcus. And do not forget, tinea solium, though it can cause intestinal manifestation, it can also cause what? Cysticercosis. Hence, it is also a somatic <coughs> cystode. Coming to the various morphological form, they say that they exist in three form. They exist in larva, larva, larva will become adult, adult will undergo fertilization to produce egg, three forms they exist. The larva of different, different cystode they have given different, different name. For example, tinea the larva is called as cysti circus. Cysti uh, circus is the larval name of uh, tinea. Tinea sagenata it is it is bovis, whereas tinea solium it is cysti circus cellulose. Hymenolepis nana the larval form is called as cysti sarcoid. <coughs> cysti sarcoid. D latum, it has got three larval form L1, L2, and L3. Among this, L3, which is the pleurosarcoid form, this is the in, in, infective form, <coughs> the, uh, this is the infective form. Somatic cystode. Echinococcus hydatid disease, I mean hydatid cyst. Hydatid cyst is a is the larval form of echinococcus. So these are the various uh, larval form given to various cystodes. Coming to egg, most of the cystodes they have a egg shell and they have three pair of hooklets three pairs of hooklets. Okay. Except D latum. D latum the egg is operculated. Operculated means what? There is a lid. It has a lid operculated egg <coughs> fine so with this introduction now let us attack one by one tinea tineasis tineasis is of two types intestinal tineasis other one is cysticercosis agent Intestinal uh, tineasis, tinea, solium, and sagenata. Cysticercosis is only tinea, solium. Host, man is a definitive host, whereas intermediate host, pigs for solium. 
कैटल फॉर सजन दैर इज फॉर सिस्टिस सर्कोसिस मैन एक्ट एस डेफिनेटिव होस्ट एज वेल एज इंटरमीडिएट होस्ट प्लीज रिमेंबर पिक्स डू नॉट प्ले ए रोल इन द लाइफ साइकिल ऑफ सिस्टिस सर्कोसिस transmission and infective form infective form for intestinal tenesis is larva larva means what hst circus either bovis or cellulose present in pork or beef so contaminated pork or beef meat is a mode of transmission so when you take contaminated pork or beef meat they contain what uh, 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 which form larval form so this larval form inside git is larva will become adult adult undergo self fertilization to produce plenty of x x are release in feces and the diagnostic form is nothing but egg and you can differentiate in only in one way they say that tinea solium sagenata x are same you cannot distinguish only uh, difference is sagenata the x are acid fast egg otherwise they are same morphologically they are same coming to cystic sarcosis which is the agent of cystic sarcosis solium or sagenata or both only solium host definitely host and intermediate host both are men infective form ulta that is X, X are the infective form. More of transmission, contaminated food and water, a containing egg. This is the main mode of transmission. It has one more mode of transmission. Then the definitive host, intermediate host is same. That leads to what? Auto infection. Auto infection is a feature which is seen in intestinal. I mean. cystic sarcosis which is not seen in intestinal tenesis so following ingestion of egg inside your git egg will develop into larva larva is cystic sarcus cellulose and this larva will penetrate git and will go and deposit in various organ it will penetrate git and will go and deposit in various organ thus a disease called as cystic sarcosis the most common organ to be affected is cns followed by muscle and eyes neurocystic sarcosis is, is the most common site and most common site in cns this is a controversial mcq some books say sub arachnoid says where some say brain parenchyma but according to my view according to what i think so many uh, the recent articles they have given that sub arachnoid space now it is replacing a brain parenchyma most common site in cns of course most common manifestation will be epilepsy so diagnosis if you do a ct scan or mri of brain or various organs what you can see is you can detect the larval form in the form of cyst they will be deposited as cyst like lesions that can be detected by 
that can be detected by CT scan and MRI. In uh, uh, intestinal tenacity, uh, what is the diagnostic form? Egg, egg in stool. Here, larva in various organs are detected by CT scan MRI. Apart from that, it is also diagnosed by antibody detection. Antibody detection can be done by ELISA and Western blot. ELISA and Western blot uh, can be done for antibody uh, detection. <coughs> they say that the cyst exists in four type of morphological forms. The uh, larval form in, in the brain and in the other areas they exist in four forms, either they are vesicular cyst, necrotic cyst, nodular cyst or calcified cyst. Okay. And there is a criteria called as del brutos criteria. Del Bruto's criteria is used for diagnosis of neurocystic uh, sarcosis. It has taken various uh, features into account like uh, ocular features, MRI features, then antibodies, epidemiological features like, like that various uh, parameters are taken into account. Del Bruto's criteria. Drug of choice for neurocystic sarcosis, of course, surgery is the mainstay of treatment. Drug of choice, they say that albendazole can be given. <coughs> Fine. Then, tinea multipase. Tinea multipase is a very rare parasite infecting man. Here the definitive host is dog, intermediate host is mainly animal, herbivorous animal that like sheep and rarely intermediate host is man. So, here also the larval form is the diagnostic form. The, the larval form of tinea multiceps is called as coenurus. Coenurus is the larval form of tinea uh, multiceps. It is deposited in CNS and the disease is called as coenurosis. It is deposited in CNS and the disease is called as coenurosis. The geographical distribution wise, they say that African countries like Kenya and Uganda. These are places where tinea multiceps cases have been reported. <coughs> Echinococcus granulosus. Can you tell me which is the definitive host? Dog, intermediate host, sheep is the usual man is accidental, man is also the dead end. Infective form egg, transmission do not say dog meat, dog meat we do not eat dog meat, transmission is contaminated food and water containing egg. So, when you ingest the egg, what happens is egg inside GIT will become larva, larva is called as hydatid cyst and the larva will penetrate the GIT and go to various organ and the most common organ affected is liver followed by lungs followed by brain. In liver again the most common site is posterior superior aspect of right liver, I mean right loop.
okay <coughs> there is one more species is called as echinococcus multilocularis <coughs> which is the agent of alveolar hydatid disease why it is called as alveolar hydatid disease the reason is most common site is no most common site is not lungs here also most common site is liver they say that here the liver involvement is even more than that of granulosis 90% most common site is a uh, 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 liver why it is called as alveolar hydatid disease because here the here the cyst has multiple locules here the hydatid cyst has multiple locules resembling alveoli that is why called as alveolar hydatid disease okay two other species are the echinococcus oligarthus and echinococcus vogeli they are the agent of polycystic hydatid disease they are the agent of polycystic hydatid disease <coughs> diagnosis you can go for a hydatid fluid microscopy you can detect the the hydatid cyst structure can be detected like they have a thick cyst wall tri laid cyst wall pericyst ectocyst and endocyst like that three layer cyst wall is there and i'm just i have just drawn the just a section of the cyst otherwise the cyst will be like this okay and to the cyst wall the brood capsules will be attached brood capsules brood capsules will be the future adult form they will form the adult form in future brood capsules so hydatid fluid microscopy uh, uh, can be done they say that acid fast chain can be done because the hook laid of hydatid cyst are acid fast hook laid of hydatid cyst are acid fast so, so acid fast chain also can be done fine apart from microscopy you can go for casuistics this is a hypersensitivity type 1 skin test <coughs> antibody detection but they say that antibodies usually indicates past infection hence they are useful only for epidemiological purpose what is more useful is antigen detection this indicate recent infection ultrasound of abdomen can demonstrate water lily sign that is the floating membrane of hydatid cyst in the abdomen floating membrane of hydatid cyst in the abdomen water lily sign <coughs> okay they say that treatment of choice will be surgery you can also go for a semi conservative surgery that is pair oh, what is pair i asked in the college one student answered that while surgery one doctor and one nurse they will uh, together do the surgery yes it is not like that it is percutaneous aspiration injection and reaspiration of hydatid fluid 
and albendazole is given the drug of choice is albendazole is given before and after the procedure albendazole is given before and after the procedure finish <coughs> then Diphenylbutyrate latum. They say that it is it is it is the largest cystode, and it has got three hosts: definitive hosts, man, intermediate host, first intermediate host, cyclops, second intermediate host, fish. It is also called as fish tapeworm. it also has three larval form l1 l2 l3 named as coracidium procercoid larva and pleuro cercoid larva which is infective form the infective form is l3 form that is pleuro cercoid larva that is pleuro cercoid larva so the mode of transmission is injection of fish containing l3 larva and is l3 larva inside git will become adult adult undergo fertilization to produce egg and the eggs are having typical feature that is the diagnostic form is operculated egg and the main clinical feature is the adult form they say that why it is called a diphyllobotrium because the adult the head end has two botria botria or group both the side the, there are two two groups in the head and this botria is responsible for sucking vitamin b12 from the intestine and that leads to megaloblastic anemia and why it is called as latum latum means broader they say that the segments the each segments are broader than longer the segments are broader than longer hence the hence it is called as latum <coughs> hymenolepis nana hymenolepis nana this is otherwise called as dwarf tapeworm and here humans are the only host it exist in three form of course adult egg and larva larva is called as cysti cercoid here the infective form is egg diagnostic form is also egg so when infective form and diagnostic form is same what is seen auto infection the egg is described as of course it has a egg shell and three pair of hooklets same like any other cystode egg but the differentiating feature is here both the shells are uh, in both the membranes are filled with polar filament polar filament and it is bile non stain bile non stain <coughs> can you tell me the bile non stain egg list 
there is a very important code the bile non stain x r nicator entrobius h nana and ankylostoma okay so most of the x are bile stain or bile non stain bile stain and this is the exception this is the exception <coughs> Tramatode. Tramatode. The examples are. Tramatodes are also called as flukes. It could be blood fluke. That is histosoma. Liver fluke. Fasciola hepatica. GI fluke fasci leopsis buski liver fluke other examples are also there apistorkis and clonorkis clonorkis and apistorkis they are also liver fluke fasciola also liver fluke fasciliopsis buski intestinal fluke and lung fluke is paragonimus paragonimus coming to the manifestations manifestation they say that cystosoma hematobium it causes squamous cell carcinoma of bladder cystosoma mansoni and japonica japonica they cause two important hypersensitivity reaction they say that they cause a cutaneous type 1 hypersensitivity reaction called as sarcarial dermatitis or swimmer's itch the same time they cause a hypersensitivity type 3 kind of serum sickness kind of infection called as katayama fever so these are the important manifestation apart from that they can cause dysentery also <coughs> liver fluke fasciola hepatica can cause hepatomegaly liver enlargement clonorkis and opisthorkis can cause ca bile duct ca bile duct fasciliopsis buski is a gi fluke so you will have all sort of intestinal manifestation and paragonimus